Joining us now is Representative Walter Jones, jones.house.gov and 28pages.org. And, of course, he is a congressman serving his ninth term from North Carolina. And uh, he joins us uh, to break down the huge development that he and others have been spearheading to try to remove Speaker Boehner from his position. If we could get rid of Pelosi out of leadership, Harry Reid in the Senate, uh, people like Boehner when he's not playing golf with Obama, uh, he's defending Obamacare, we can't defund Planned Parenthood, uh, we can't stop partial birth abortion, uh, we can't uh, control the borders, we can't keep the power plants on even though there's no law to shut them off because Boehner, whether he's blackmailed or whether he's paid off or uh, whether he's had a lobotomy, we don't know. Uh, but with a Republican Speaker of the House like this, you might as well just put Nancy Pelosi back in there. At least we know who she is. So Representative Walter Jones is here to give us the inside baseball. We're very thankful to him uh, on what happened last week uh, and the fact that this could still happen if people get behind it. And this could be a real game changer. I don't have to tell the audience that uh, if we're able to remove uh, these rhinos uh, out of the power structure. And then we'll look at federal lawsuit could reveal the contents of 28 pages omitted from 9-11 report implicating the Saudi government quarterbacking the operation. And, of course, Congressman Jones has been exposing that. Now they're saying take out Assad to defeat ISIS when ISIS is al-Qaeda, Saudi Arabian funded. This is the Republican and Democratic leadership playing on the ignorance of the public, saying take out Assad who has been fighting Al-Qaeda, to, to stop Al-Qaeda. So just incredible. Uh, Walter Jones is an expert on this as well. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Uh, and please give us an update on exactly what's happening, because the mainstream media is not covering the fact that Boehner is in some trouble, isn't he? Yes, and Alex, thank you. It's always an honor and pleasure to be on your show, and I appreciate you telling the truth to the American people. And on this issue, let me, uh, for those that may be not as familiar as you are and I, uh, we in the Congress have been very frustrated by John Boehner and the fact that he does not follow conservative principles. Uh, you can blame President uh, Obama for spending money, but he can't raise the debt ceiling unless we in Congress uh, pass legislation to allow him to raise that debt ceiling. So let me go to where we are now. Uh, Mark Meadows, who is also a congressman from North Carolina, he's from the mountain area. I'm from the coastal area. And we had been talking for months now about what we could do. We tried to get into a second round back in January with Mr. Boehner trying to get 29 votes to send it to a second round, and then maybe we could get him out by, by in January. That did not happen. So the frustration has continued. And we met about five or six weeks ago, Ted Yeho from uh, Florida, Thomas Massey from Kentucky, myself and Mark Meadows, talking about what can we do, what kind of opportunities do we have as members of Congress to bring the Congress back to the people. It's their house, not our house. And so Mr. Meadows came up with this idea of vacating the chair. So he and Thomas Massey worked together on a resolution. It's H Resolution 385. 385, H Resolution 385. Your listeners can go on, on anybody's website, mine or anyone else, and find this. Let me read two parts of this very quickly to get us talking, Alex. The first is this in the resolution, whereas the Speaker of the House of Representatives for the 114th Congress has endeavored to consolidate power and centralize decision-making, bypassing the majority of the 435 members of the Congress and the people they represent. Just another one. Whereas the Speaker uses the power of the office to punish members who vote according to their conscience instead of the will of the Speaker. And the last one. Whereas the Speaker continues to direct the Rules Committee to limit meaningful amendments, to limit debate on the House floor, and to so that, excuse me, subvert a straightforward legislative process. They're just three of the eight, uh, whereas is in the resolution by Mr. Meadows. Uh, Mr. Massey, I, and Mr. Yoho have joined him in co-sponsoring this resolution. Why I am honored and pleased to be on your show again, Alex, is that any of your listeners, whatever state they might be in, 
if they would call their member of Congress, all of them are home now for the next three, four weeks, actually, and call them and ask them, tell the person that answers the phone to remind that congressman that he or she could join in this resolution to vacate the chair. And if we can get enough votes, what will happen, we will have a straight up and down vote on who the next speaker, speaker should be to replace John Boehner. And uh, we, we really, I have nothing against the speaker personally. He's a good man personally, but he is not a policy leader. And we need to return this country back, this government, excuse me, government back to the people. Again, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina joins us. You can go to jones.house.gov and read the bill. We just put it on screen. You can also read the Daily Signal article. Conservative congressman seeks to oust John Boehner as House Speaker. Look, you're a gentleman, and I respect that. I know Boehner reportedly is very nice, very charming, very friendly. But then he will viciously, as you mentioned, through his whip and others, you might explain how that works, go after sure. members of the House that don't follow his orders so I don't care how nice he is when he sticks a knife in your back. He needs to be removed, whether it's on partial birth abortion that we had the votes on, or whether it's Obamacare, or whether it's shutting off the power plants, or the open borders, or the debt limit. I mean, this is one of the, I mean, he makes Newt Gingrich look good, and Gingrich was a sellout. This guy is completely out of control, and we need to start a hashtag like Fire Boehner. Let, let, let's put that out at Real Alex Jones. Fire Boehner, and then let's link uh, to the resolution that's linked uh, on Congressman Jones's uh, site. Uh, but there's the headline from Politico, House Conservatives Seek John Boehner's Ouster. And, and let's get this moving to hashtag Fire Boehner. Uh, I mean, we've recalled Republican governors that act like this. We've recalled other people. I mean, it's outrageous just on Obamacare alone. Uh, but, but explain to people how all this parliamentary procedure works, because I know they were going to bring it up for a vote to try to kill this bill. I'm told they then learned they didn't have enough votes to kill it. Uh, since then, I've been trying to follow it. Explain to us the, okay. the, the Byzantine machinations. Okay. Alex, the H, -Con Res H Resolution 385 is now in the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee will be the committee that will determine to send this back to the full House, meaning back to the floor of the House, for a vote. And you're exactly right. The day after Mark Meadows put this in, Mr. Boehner's people were thinking about go ahead and bring it out of the Rules Committee back on the floor and kill it before the August break. You're exactly right. What happened was that the Jim Jordan from, uh, from Ohio got word to the leadership that if you try this, you might be embarrassed. Because let me remind your listeners of this. Every member sitting on the floor of the House will have a chance to vote uh, to vacate the chair, and then that would mean there would be another vote for the Speaker of the House, uh, and it would be a new person if that happened. So that's where it is. And so what we're trying to do, the ones I have mentioned, uh, Yoho, Massey, Mark Meadows, and myself, Walter Jones, we're trying to get on as many shows, people who have a national audience like yourself, to talk about this issue because... There's so many things going on in Washington that it's not the people's house anymore, Alex. It's controlled by money. It's the special interest house, not the people's house. We won't have a speaker of the house that will let us do our job and represent the people of our district yes, without sir. being threatened. Well, uh, again, I'm going to skip this network break because we just have you to the bottom of the hour. Uh, Congressman Walter Jones joins us. And, and I tell you, it's very humbling, sir, and, and quite frankly, borders on obscene. Uh, for you to be thanking myself for having uh, you on when you're the one going up against this mafia. You're the one exposing Saudi Arabia and 9-11. You're the one doing this. And I know you don't like praise, but people need to be praying for you. You've got a lot of courage. And uh, quite frankly, you're doing some things that even Ron Paul uh, wasn't doing when he was congressman. He went after the Federal Reserve. You're going right at the heart with some really dangerous people. So please don't thank us, sir. We want to thank you for working so hard uh, and, and, and again, it's not about praise, but folks need to understand the position you're in, working so hard, doing all these interviews, helping get the bills out in the face of this guy and in the threats. Let's talk about how Boehner threatens people and the way he twists arms to keep things like Obamacare afloat. Well, Alex, let me give the Trade Promotion Authority, TPA, which was a vote about three weeks ago, maybe four now. And I think this is what really brought us to a head, to be honest about it. 
we had the votes on the, the rule. As you know, a rule has to be voted on by the House before you get to the debate on the bill itself. We actually had the votes to kill the rule. Uh, Mr. Boehner and the president wanted this bill to pass to give the president the trade promotion authority, meaning he could bypass Congress with any type of treaty, and all Congress could do is to vote up or down, no, no ability to amend it. So we would give away our right to amend. So let me go back to the rule now. You have to have a rule that sets the parameters of the debate. So we had the votes to kill the rule. Three members of the Republican House who had been in the SWIP organization had voted with us on this rule. What happened a day later, they were kicked off the, uh, uh, the whip team. That's not a big thing. Then we've had other members who voted against Boehner who were denied the right to go on these overseas trips with other members of Congress, meaning Republicans and Democrats. Uh, I have a bill that uh, is a minor thing in a way, but let me explain it very quickly. A dear friend of mine, a 55-year-old federal bankruptcy judge, died suddenly of a heart attack. We have the courthouse here in, in my district. We wanted to name the courthouse for this uh, judge, Judge Randy Dabb. Uh, he's a Republican, but the Democrats, everybody said he was a very fair-minded person. Uh, and they won't move that bill. I've got it through the committee, but they won't move it to the floor of the House. So what they do is they won't move your bills. You want to go out for trade for your state on these trade missions. They won't let you go. They basically cut you off. But bigger than that, it's Boehner's been caught, as you know, it's been in the news with the Democrats meeting with big think tanks and big lenders and, and, and big donors on how to go after the Tea Party. So he's been quietly, while telling the Tea Party to play nice, he's been trying to kill the libertarian constitutionalist movement uh, that could save this country. I mean, I, I've got to say it. Uh, Boehner is worse than Benedict Arnold when it comes to settling this country out. Well, you're right. And, and Alex, let me say this. The, the, the point is that when... We are elected to represent the people of our district. We are not sent to Washington to, to be a puppet for the Speaker of the House. And that's one thing, this resolution, I hope your listeners uh, will look it up, H. Resolution 385. We are there to represent the people of our district, the people across this nation. No one should dictate to our conscience how we should vote. And if I have a minute to, I'd like to explain something that happened recently. Please, sir, you've got the floor. Okay, we had a bill two, two months ago that the Republicans brought to the floor of the House that would allow the, the uh, mobile home companies in writing their contracts to someone that wants to buy a mobile home to raise the interest rate from 8 to 11 percent. Warren Buffett, who is a billionaire, in his financial portfolio owns 91 percent of all the mobile home businesses in America. And I could not vote for that because in my district, the eastern part of North Carolina, we have over 45,000 mobile homes where people are living. We have people every day that the best they can do is to buy a mobile home. I could not raise the interest rate from 8 to 11 on that person trying to buy a mobile home to help Warren Buffett become a million, have more millions going to his billions. And, and let's not forget, he gets billions and 0% rates and is the biggest recipient of the banker bailout while he lobbies for regulations that actually make it more expensive uh, to be able to get affordable housing because he basically controls the regulators and is exempt from it. I mean, this guy is a monster. Alex, that's why we need to change the leadership of the House. We need somebody up there in that position that understands that those of us elected from districts in America, we represent the people of this country, not the wishes of the special interest. You know, it's funny you mention that. They used to have these payday loan laws, especially in the South, left over from the end of the Civil yeah. War. And, and now they allow like 20, 30 percent interest and stuff a year, uh, just ripping people off. I mean, it is shameful what Congress, but also these states have been doing. So I commend you for that. Bottom line We've got a shot at, at, at at least wounding him politically and scaring him to back off. But I think from other folks I've talked to, and correct me if I'm wrong, Congressman, we're pretty close to actually being able to unseat Boehner if the people get behind this. Alex, if the people would get behind this and, and, and call their member of Congress during this next three to four weeks, tell them about H. Resolution 385 and ask that member of Congress to join those of us who have put our necks out there 
and say that we need to return the House of Representatives to the people of America. That's why Donald Trump is so popular. I mean, I mean, really, people are frustrated and fed up, and most of that frustration and, and being fed up is with Washington, D.C. And then he acts like he's from the outside, and they start worshiping him. I mean, I like a lot of the stuff he's actually saying. My only concern is... is um is the fact that uh, he wasn't like that in the past. But but people change. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Let me ask you that question. What do you think is going to happen to Trump if he runs third party and helps Hillary win or if he drops out uh, and, and, and plays hanky-panky? I hope he realizes that he, he is going to be anathema. Well, let, let me say up front, I have already endorsed Rand Paul. That's my choice. Uh, and, and the only thing I was trying to make the point with Donald Trump is that the frustration is deep. The frustration is so deep that, and I can say Bernie Sanders, look at the crowds he's drawing. People sure. are just tired and fed up. And one way we can change the direction of, of the uh, this direction is to replace the Speaker of the House. And if, again, yes. if your listeners would follow your call and my call and pick up the phone, call their members of Congress, H Resolution 385, and let's return the House back to the people of America. I agree, Congressman. Uh, in the three or four minutes we have left, uh, I just want to make the point again before we get into the situation with 28 pages, we have some breaking news there, that basically getting a good speaker would be like winning the White House. The, the Congress controls the purse. It controls what bills can move. The reason they're able to get this agenda through is they have Republican leadership working with the Democrats. This is as big as the election, removing Boehner and getting somebody good in there. And I think to get rid of him, we need a few members of the House to stand up and say, I want to be elected and this is what I'll do. I think if people challenge him and we get the leadership to not just go after him, but people say, you know, here's a field of folks. Here's what we pledge to do. Yep. Maybe a coalition of 10 members of the House to say any of us could be speaker. Vote for us. Here's our pledge. Then you'd see a grassroots movement and we can unseat him. So hopefully you've been moving the ball. Uh, what do you think of that idea, sir? Well, I think it's a great idea. The, the, the one thing that you know and I know, if anyone that would like to offer themselves as, as a speaker, they want to know that they can win this first step. And the first step is to vacate the chair so you have to at least get it introduced to to open the idea of being able to have the vote no absolutely if we had this vote on the floor of the house and and there would be people that was would be smelling the blood so to speak they would start offering themselves up as a possibility i think there would be at least three four or five if they thought sure. that, that Boehner was going to be taken out of office they would offer themselves it would happen that quick so it's, it's like fishing for now. sharks we got to get him on the line with the vacate the chair boat then we can haul him in and gaff him there you go in closing sir uh shifting gears into your dangerous and valiant move that's now exposed in headlines all over the world uh with other members of the house that saudi arabia quarterback 9 11 you've seen the pages yep. uh now uh, more of this is coming out. U.S. ex-intelligence chief came out and said on ISIS's rise, it was a willful Washington decision to back them against Assad. Now Jeb Bush is saying, and Obama is saying, they're going to start bombing Assad to, quote, stop ISIS. That's the craziest thing I ever heard. What's your view on I, that? I, I agree with you totally. And, and if, if, if my brother had sent 4,000 Americans to die in an unnecessary war, I don't believe I'd be making those statements. I'm talking about George Bush going into Iraq. We never had to go into Iraq. It was manufactured intelligence. Sure, and Jeb at first defended it. Remember that? Oh, yeah, I do. I, I'm being kind of kind of rude, but I'm going to tell you, uh, we had no business going into Iraq. Taking out Saddam is part of the problem that we got with the uh, Middle East right now. Well, sure. Look at what we've got is uh, Saudi Arabia again with its proxy army taking over, and now the White House has announced bombing of Assad, who's fighting the Saudi Arabian proxy army. Well, Alex, that's why Jim McGovern and I and Barbara Lee have been pushing John Boehner to let us have a new debate and vote on the authorization of military force. Uh, they, they complain about the Obama this and Obama that, but they're letting him go just decide whatever he wants to do to expand the war without any action of Congress. And, and, and Madison said it is the legislative branch that will de 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 debate and discuss the justification for war.
Yes, sir. Well, again, everybody's got to get behind this. People want to spend all their time about the election. That's fine. Controlling the House, getting a patriot in. That is the key. We've got good men and women up there. Let's do it. Let's get behind it. Thank you so much, Congressman Walter Jones. Jones.house.gov. And give folks that resolution number one more time. The H resolution 385. 385. Thank you so much. And please, Thank you, Alex. Please come back soon, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. God bless Walter Jones. Let me tell you, that guy is soft-spoken, but he's a real patriot and a real man. What he's doing is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. You need to pray for him.